So in the last video, we introduced a bit of terminology. We should take a bit of time in this video to talk about that terminology. The terminology we introduced is the idea of flux. Okay, and so in this video, we really want to ask the question, what is flux? What are the units of it? How do we think about it? What does it make sense to talk about the flux of? So let's first talk very qualitatively about what flux is. Qualitatively speaking, flux is defined for a given surface. And flux is the amount of some physical quantity that crosses that surface per unit time. So it's a quantity crossing surface per unit time. And so to give you a couple of examples of that, I could talk about, for example, what the flux of energy was across the surface. So if I have the, a house, Right? and I have a window here, right? I could imagine that the sun is shining through that window, and I could talk about what the amount of energy per unit time was that was going through that window. In other words, I could talk about an energy flux or a power through the window. Right? So it would make sense to talk about the energy per unit time, the power, and that flux would be defined for this surface of the window. I could also imagine um, talking about the flux of mass. So say I've got a, a pipe, right? And in the pipe, there's water flowing in the pipe. And if I imagine sort of taking some, you know, imaginary cross-section of the pipe and sort of saying, okay, here is a surface that's, that I'm defining inside the pipe, I could ask the question, how many kilograms of water are passing through that um, surface per unit time, right? So I could actually think about a flux of mass, which would be mass per unit time passing through a surface. I could also think about number per unit time, like I might count the number of particles passing through a surface per unit time. So number per unit time would be another um, example of a flux. But in all cases, notice that it's the flux we're defining right now, flux in terms of a quantity, a physical quantity per unit time, and it's a physical quantity that is passing through some defined surface, right? So to talk about flux, what the flux is, we need to know what surface we're talking about, and we need to know about what physical quantity we're talking about. Now I'm going to note that if you're doing electromagnetism right now, you've probably talked about flux of electric field, and in that particular case, you're actually calculating flux of a vector field, which is not doesn't have a time embedded in it. But for our purposes right now, we're talking about flux in a conservation um, sort of environment. And so because of that, the time idea is important here. So just a sort of flag that it's not always the case that you talk about flux as being a quantity crossing a surface per unit time. Now, um, you might ask the question, what kinds of quantities does it make sense to talk about the flux of? And in general, when we're deriving partial differential equations, we're talking about conserved quantities when you're thinking about flux. So we're talking about the kinds of quantities that it would make sense to have a stock of, uh, the kinds of quantities that are physical extensive quantities, so that are associated, that are not just in a, a material property, that, but that are actually associated with how much stuff there is. So examples of this would be energy, would be mass, would be quantity, would be numbers, would be momentum. Um, on the other hand, th things like pressure would not be a quantity. It wouldn't make sense to talk about what the flux of pressure was because pressure is not a conserved quantity. Okay. Um, now, one of the things that's sort of important to, to note here is that flux, because it is defined for a surface, actually depends on what surface you choose, right? So if I chose, say, for example, just to talk about this surface in the sort of lower half of the surface in my pipe, there is less flux through that surface than through the entire surface, right? The flux density through the surface is the same. That is, that is the amount, same amount of mass per unit time per unit area passing through the surface. But the actual flux through the smaller surface is smaller. Now, flux ends up being really useful 
in deriving different partial differential equations because of this sort of conservation idea that we introduced in the last um, in the last video. So when we remember in the last video, we talked about the case where we had a pipe. And we were interested in asking the question, how much energy is coming in and how much energy is going out? Well, since energy is in conserved quantity, it must be the case that the time rate of change of the energy inside of this slice must be equal to the amount of flux that comes in minus the amount of flux that goes out. Right? And that's why this idea of flux ends up being useful, because it allows us to frame um, equations for quantities that actually vary in space like this. So I think that's all we'll say in this video about flux. In the next video we'll talk about how the kinds of flux and how you actually determine flux for different types of physical situations.